Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial on Frame Relay Virtual Circuits. We're going to continue from where we left off in the Frame Relay Components tutorial. And we have our diagram here and all of the basic pieces are in place. So we have our DTEs, our routers, we have the Frame Relay switches, the data communications equipment, and we have our access links. Now we just need to know how our routers talk to each other given that they don't have point-to-point -point circuits directly connecting them. And that's where virtual circuits enter the picture. So a virtual circuit is a logical or virtual connection through the frame relay provider network and it connects two of our routers. Now it's considered logical because a dedicated connection for each router pair just doesn't exist. Remember, we don't have point-to-point -point circuits here that terminate on each of the router pairs directly connecting them. Now oftentimes in frame relay documentation, you'll see a virtual circuit represented as a dashed line. And really these virtual circuits, they act like and they deliver the functionality of a point-to-point -point circuit. And there are two types of virtual circuits you should be aware of. The first one is the switched virtual circuit. And this is dynamically built. So when it's needed, it's created. And then when it's no longer needed, it's torn down. The second type is known as the permanent virtual circuit. And this one is always there when you need it. You don't have to build it every time you need to use it. So it's pre-configured on the service provider's network. Now don't take this to mean that a a point-to-point -point circuit actually does exist. What this means is that the configurations on the service providers network are always in place. These mappings of the virtual circuit itself and how to get from router B to router C, for instance, are just always going to be there when you need it. Okay, that's all it means. So usually when people get frame, re frame relay service, they're getting permanent virtual circuits from the service provider. In fact, no one really offers switch virtual circuits for business use these days. So the, the safe assumption is we are talking about PVCs. So we have one connection to the network for each router, and that's the access link. However, we can have multiple virtual circuits run across each one of those links, and that's one of the great things about Frame Relay. With a single physical connection, I can have multiple virtual connections to many different locations. Now each one of these virtual circuits is going to be distinguished by the frame relay addressing. And since there's a lot of detail to cover there, we're going to put that on hold for a dedicated tutorial. Each one of these virtual circuits is going to have a certain amount of determined bandwidth. And this brings us to the term of CIR, or Committed Information Rate. You'll see this when you're talking to technicians about Frame Relay, or if you're reviewing contracts from a service provider uh, when you purchase their services. This is one of the terms they talk about. The Committed Information Rate is the bandwidth that you're going to be guaranteed to get from the service provider for each virtual circuit. Now, that's important because this cloud here, the service provider cloud, is a shared infrastructure for all of their clients. So you need to make sure that you know, you're getting your fair share of what you're paying for, and that's where the committed information rate comes into. Now what's interesting about Frame Relay is even if you exceed your committed information rate for one of your virtual circuits, your traffic actually still might get through, or it might get dropped. Now whether or not it gets through or it gets dropped has to deal with how congested the frame relay service provider's network is. And there are a bunch of different uh, tools for ad addressing the congestion and we talk about those in a dedicated tutorial because there's a lot of details to cover there. But for now keep in mind committed information rate is the bandwidth you're going to be paying for and you should be getting. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the two approaches you can take to connecting all of your different locations via Frame Relay. Now, the first one is referred to as a full mesh, and that's what we have here in this diagram. What that means is all of the locations have a PVC built between them. So there's a dedicated PVC between router A and router C, between router B and C, and finally A and B. That's the full mesh, and obviously you have to pay for each one of those virtual circuits, so this would be a little bit more expensive than the next option. The second option is called a partial mesh. And a partial mesh would look like this. Not all of the routers have a PVC built between them. 
So this would save you some money because now you're paying for one less PVC. However, there is an operational impact. When you have a partial mesh, in order for the routers to talk to each other that don't have a PVC between them, so for instance, router A and router C, in order for them to talk, their traffic must traverse router B in order to get to each other. So if router A wants to talk to router C, it first has to send it over the virtual circuit to router B, and then router B has to send it over its virtual circuit to router C. Whether or not that works on your network has to deal a lot with how much bandwidth you need for each of these locations, what kind of traffic you send over it. So there's a lot of discussion to be had on which route you should choose, but generally speaking, those are your two choices, full mesh or partial mesh. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. Since we don't have point-to-point -point connections between routers, we have virtual circuits, which is just a logical connection between two routers over a frame relay network. And there are two types, the switched virtual circuit, which is dynamically built and torn down, and the permanent virtual circuit, and that's the one you're going to come across more often than not these days. You can fit multiple virtual circuits over a single access link. That's the whole point of getting the, the benefits out of Frame Relay. And each one of those virtual circuits has a committed information rate, how much bandwidth it can, it can use. And then you have two approaches to designing your network. You can create a full mesh where every router has a virtual connection to every other router, or a partial mesh where only some of the routers on your network have virtual circuits between them. Each one has a cost implication and depending on the type of traffic and your needs, an operational implication as well. Okay, so that's it. That is Frame Relay Virtual Circuits. Thanks for watching.